come when the student have a negative attitude to a certain subject, a student have a negative attitude to a certain teacher. So number one thing that the student need to do uh, so that they can perform better is to develop positive attitude towards teachers and towards subjects. As much as we are saying that there is that transition from primary school to high school, where a student maybe in high school, in primary school they were doing eight subjects, no, not eight they were doing five subjects and then they come to high school where they are expected to do 12 subjects. Some students get confused and some students feel overwhelmed. And hence, they, 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 they develop bad attitude towards towards certain subjects and they develop a bad attitude towards certain t- 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 teachers. They despise them or maybe they, 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 they scorn the 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 subject and all that and that one is going to affect their performance because there is no way that you will have a, a, a distasteful uh, attitude towards a certain subject and then you are expected to perform there is no way that you will sit Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Wanjero Kabuchi. I'm so happy. I'm so, so grateful that I'm able finally to sit down and do some videos. Clap for me. Yeah, because it has been, it has been a while. It has been quite some time since I sat down and did a video. And I want to officially introduce myself so that at least when you're coming back to this channel, you can be able to see and to know who are you interacting with. So as I said, my name is Wanjiro Kabuchi. I'm a teacher by profession. I am an educator. I am a mental health advocate. I love life. I love, you know, speaking out i love you know positive vibes and all that life brings along my way now i've been away for quite some time but of course it's because of some issues work and all that a lot has happened and i'm happy that i'm back here again and uh to talk up topic all too now uh, as i have said i'm an educator i'm a teacher by profession and i've been having this great concern about my students why because i think in the era that we are in people are no longer at your hey pause kidogo i want to i want to give out a shout out to the person who sold me this phone uh this this watch is such a nice one and this ring she's called stephanie if i'm able to get her handles i will also uh, put them down here ah you know i'm just giving some free some free shout outs to her because of course they look nice thank you stephanie for that now let me say this that uh i'm a teacher by profession i love teaching i love i love being with students but it has come to my great concern and i'm seeing so many students that are not performing as by expectation you know when we are growing up maybe things have changed uh we knew or we were even told that the only thing that can liberate you from poverty and the thing that can liberate you uh and and make your future a bit brighter is through education nowadays students have really changed that perspective and so many of them do not even care about their performance some of them are not even concerned about their performance and all that so they end up not performing as by the expectation you find a student has 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 very high marks in terms of kcp marks but when they come to the secondary school now their marks start going down of course we know the changes that are there of course when you are moving from primary school to secondary school uh, you are used to five subjects only and then you come to high school where now you'll be taking around 12 subjects that can be overwhelming but despite that because you're also growing you're also becoming more responsible responsible and you are having qualified teachers to teach you uh, of course we have had a lot of concern in terms of poor performance academic performance uh, has really gone down in some places and that uh, it's a great concern and personally the reason why i'm so concerned about the poor performance among the students is because i teach boys and i've seen uh, a lot of a lot of poor performance in terms of you know boys having very low grades and that becomes my great concern that becomes a great concern to me why because you know i think from our african setup we know that men are generally supposed to be very responsible they're supposed to be providers they're very supposed to be you know hold the family together and all that and so when i see a student who is not uh, who is capable of performing but they're not performing to their level best uh, that becomes a, of, of great concern there's so many other factors that can lead to that but basically i want to talk about factors that are affecting the students themselves 
hence poor performance. Because if you think about, you know, what contributes to a family setup, there's so many other factors, external factors that this student could not be having control of, and hence they are also contributing to their poor performance. I'll give an instance where, of course, a student has come from a, a, a broken family where the father and the mother are not joined together or they're not even living together. That kid, because they are now developed, when they come to secondary school, they're developing themselves. They are kind of understanding themselves. They want to identify themselves with someone. They want to identify themselves either with the mom or with the dad, and maybe the dad and the, the, the mom, they're not present there. That becomes kind of a disorientation in terms of, you know, their mind and author. That can disorient you, uh, can disorient them. Another thing is that, of course, we have seen a lot of boys who have not realized their themselves up until late in their secondary school now that one becomes a very big challenge because that stage when now this boy is trying to identify himself he's trying to know who am i what do i need to do and all that kind of stage that one can be again having a lot of confusion and the student might end up not performing as per the expectation of course we have the peer pressure again uh, that also contributes to the poor performance of the students where you know you have come from a very bug uh, discipline background and of a, you've been raised with a lot of discipline but it gets to a point where now you get to high school and especially in boarding school and then you get to a clique of boys who uh, um, now influence you negatively. Maybe you become very responsible, you become a, such a time waster. And, and all these, of course, they are going to have a very negative impact into your performance. But before we even talk to, uh, about all that, uh, the primary causes, uh, there, there are some primary causes of, of poor performance, and then we have the secondary causes of poor performance. And today I want us to explore all the primary causes of poor, poor performance among the students. And if you are able to learn and to talk about them better and in a, in a good way, I, and I think having an open conversation with your student or with your child, I think if, you, if they openly tell you what are some of the things that are ailing them then of course at the end of the day you're going to have helped them in terms of performing so very well and i think it's very very good that we also become very honest with our children and tell them how their life is out here and one of the way as a as a teacher one of the things that i always insist to them that despite where they come from despite their background they have their own life to live so how do they want to live that life do they want to live that life uh doing hard labor do they want to live that life begging do they want to live that life you know not certain of where to get the daily daily bread tomorrow where do they want to to be in life what do they want to become so that conversation we actually sometimes have with them but of course because of the numbers we cannot be able to have the individualized kind of a setup where you sit down with each and every an individual or each and every student and then talk about this so become hard for a teacher to sit with each and every student and guide them you know, one-on-one, -on -one, it's become so hard. So I'm calling upon all the parents that you have this kind of a conversation because now when you release students and they come to you, then it means that you as a parent, you can have a guideline. You can have a one-on-one -on -one with this kind of student uh, so that at least when you guide them and when you give them information, uh, at least they, they will see the seriousness of that and then, of course, they will improve if, if there are areas that they need to improve. Uh, so one of the factors that highly contribute to poor performance is lack of motivation. Uh, you find that you're not motivated to learn, you're not motivated to work hard and all that. Let me give you a scenario. In each and every community today or in each and every household, we have people who have studied up to the university level. And I think uh, in our country today, that is, of course, Kenya, we are having a lot of uh, high rate of unemployment. So you find that uh, in each and every homestead, there's someone who has studied, maybe have gone up to the university, but they're not pursuing or they're not doing a career related to what they studied. And that one, sometimes students, they ask you uh, or they ask me as a teacher when I'm asking them and, and pressuring them to work hard and to perform, they always ask me, uh, my, my my cousin or my sister or my brother uh, did this and up to the university level, but they have never gotten a job. You see, to them, that becomes like a routine that even if I work hard, I, I, I get a good grade, I go to the university, chances are that I might not get a job. Uh, but of course, of course, I do not. Yes, I know. I know it's a concern where we have a lot of unemployment in our country today. But I, this is what I always tell them. I always tell them that uh, it's always good to start or it's always good to have something on your hands than to have nothing. Uh, that is to say that, of course, it's good that you have your papers with you than to have than having not no, no papers at all because if you have the papers and a chance 
crop up chances are that you're going to bring your papers or you're going to take your paper to the to the uh, to, to where the, the vacancy is and then you will get a job so as much as they are saying there's lack of motivation which is true because of course if they look at the society today and even you as my viewers you know of someone who did a certain course up to the university level but they do not have a job so that one when the students now think about they know like three four five people they always ask themselves I'm also going to be in the same statistics. So that one demotivates them sometimes. And uh, that means that we all need to come up strongly and tell them that it is, yes, it is good. Or it is good that they have noticed such kind of a concern. Or it is good that they have observed such. But again, they don't have to dwell much on that. Because this is what I tell them that, of course, we are built differently. And we are all different. So it, your fortune might not be the other person's fortune. And so in the process, they might work hard. But it is also a big duty for parents and for everybody out there to ensure that they motivate these students to work hard and uh, not to look at what is really happening in the environment that can really demotivate them and hence not get the poor or the good grades. Now, there's a lot of noise that is happening. Um, I'm seated somewhere out and I don't have the control <laughs> of what is happening around me. But now, focus. The next or another primary factor that, um, that, that, that also contributes to the poor performance is poor study skills. Students have adopted a very bad, um, a very bad habit of cramming, like they can easily narrate things that, that you have taught them. But the retention in their mind, such that if you give them a question, the way they are going to, re to, to respond to that, having not crammed, is not going to work out 100%. So uh, poor study skills where they even study with the no revision papers, they study without writing down points. And those are some of the skills that are very, very important. You know, when you're studying a certain topic and then you're writing down some notes, that means that you're going to have a better retention. But if you keep on cramming, that means that at the end of the day, you might not retain all that you have crammed in your head. So students have very poor study habits. Uh, some of them, they just speak, even if it's uh, a mathematic or, or it's physics, they're just speaking it uh, uh, with no apparent uh, calculator, with no uh, pen, and they just want to read even mathematics as a novel. You know, when you have such kind of poor uh, study habits, then of course, chances are that you're not going to, you know, to... to to perform better you need to make sure that you at least you know the skill of note taking you are taking small notes as you are reading through you need to ensure that at least you have some questions that are helping you to revise on that topic if you can have topical questions the better because once you read a whole topic then it means that you're now going to get to the different questions pertaining that topic and then that one is going to help you to retain whatever you have you have uh, also uh, studied uh, another factor that also highly contributes to the poor performance of students is lack of enough resources. You know, we have had places and we have had institutions with no enough uh, learning materials. Uh, for instance, uh, the labs are not well equipped. We do not have uh, uh, a library which is well equipped. And so these, these things uh, might contribute to the poor performance uh, towards the student. So because if, for instance, it's practicals, they need to make sure that once you they do a, they read a certain topic that requires a certain demonstration, then it means that they need to see that demonstration being done either in the lab or somewhere else. So if there are no uh, enough uh, learning materials, students are not going to grasp that concept well. Yeah. So lack of enough resource materials, again, it contributes to the poor performance of the student. There's some, even some places where, of course, there are no materials whatsoever. And so some students even do not get to see those, uh, the apparatus that are needed or they do not even need uh, get to see, to use them so that when, when, when they, they will be given that as a question and exam, that they will be able to practically apply that. So if they, we do not have adequate learning materials or adequate learning resources, chances are that the students are, going to, are not going to perform better. Because let me tell you one thing, the 844 system, it's more of, uh, it, it, it's more of seeing, experimenting, and exams. So if that is not what is happening, the student have finished a whole topic that needed a certain uh, experiment to be done and they do not have the resources to do that experiment when that one is brought in an exam they might not be able to perform as per 
uh, as per the expectations because they w did not practice in the first place. So a uh, lack of enough resource materials can highly, highly contribute to the poor performance towards the student. And and, and, and I think this is now beyond, um, it, it's beyond uh, the student themselves. It's beyond the student themselves. It's more of the institution kind of a thing and and of course the government they also need, need to ensure that at least the basic requirement for learning they are provided across all the the the, the learning institutions and of course that one is going to boost uh the learning in different institutions another factor that can can lead or can cont highly contribute to the poor performance of the student is the family background uh, and this affects students in so many ways family background can be a background where the student is uh, raised by both parents, uh, but that both parents do not have much control towards the student. So they cannot be able to sit back and tell the student that here you're performing poorly, here you are not. You need to improve. Uh, another factor in terms of family background is where a child is raised by a grandma who maybe did not even go to school, who does not even know the value of, of, of school. And so that grandma or that grandpa might not uh, significantly contribute towards guiding the student to work hard. They will only verbally say work hard, but you see they will not be able to know what you really need to do for you to ensure that you work hard. So that one also affect some students. Uh, family background again in terms of resources, you know, a family that is not able to pay the amount that is required in that learning institution, chances are that the boy or the girl will be will always be sent home uh, to get maybe this, this, the school fees and all that. So that has to also affect the student because there are some times this kid is going to be out uh, from school and then that means that by the time they're coming back, of course, the school, the learning has taken place and, and catching up might be hard. So probably background really contributes to the poor performance of the student. And I would call upon everybody in terms of family setup, the parent, the guardian, to ensure that they are contributing and they are doing their parts the right way. Like if you need to guide your boy to do work hard, please do that. If you need to provide the resources that are required for learning to take place, also do that. Yeah, also do that. So that at least you have done your part and then the teacher will do their parts. Hence, we all contribute towards what? Towards uh, good performance. And, and, and boys have issues whilst they are growing up. So it is good that you get connected to them, get closer to them, understand them, listen to them so that at least you can know what is really ailing them, what is really causing the poor performance. And at the, and at the end of the day, of course, that one will uh, contribute positively towards the uh, uh, performance um the next so another factor that affects um uh, performance of the student is the teaching methodology and the quality of the teacher uh because teaching methodology affect the student's performance in uh in a certain ways so the technique that the teacher is going to adopt so that they can teach the student to uh deliver the content and ensure that the content that they have delivered will be of great quality also matters a lot uh, of course we have the fast learner students that need to be handled in a certain way and then we have the slow learners of course students will not always be the same when you draw a curve they are, the curve must be uniform in terms of there are those students that um so another factor that can highly contribute to the poor performance among students is um uh distractions and addiction now uh we are living in an era where, of course, there's so much that is happening and, of course, we have so much uh, that is happening in terms of social media and all these. And all these can, can contribute to the distractions and can bring distractions to the student. And then that means that they're not going to fully concentrate in class. They're not going to fully concentrate in their studies. And then again, we have uh, we are living in an era again where we have a lot of drug and drug abuse. And, and, and this one, unfortunately, is even practiced by students. So you find that if students are abusing drugs and if the students are highly influenced by the social media uh, in terms of, you know, the negativity that we have around the country. And you can you can be bear with me witness that, of course, because of social media, a lot is happening 
uh, that is of, of, on the negative side. So if a student is distracted from his core values or from her core business, that is, of course, studying and working hard in school because of social media, because of drug and drug and drug abuse, that means that these guys are not going to perform well in class and they're not going to perform well or they're not going to perform as per the expectations of everybody. You know, we expect that the students, when they're in school, they're performing well. But again, if they're distracted uh, by the social media, they're distracted uh, because of, you know, use of drug and drug abuse that of course again is going to result to you know uh poor performance and a lot has been done in terms of activation and in terms of you know sensitizing students against uh, the, the 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 use of drug and drug abuse because it is a great concern and among the boys again it's a it's a it's highly uh, a great concern and many people feel oh even me as a teacher, I feel like uh, the society has highly neglected this area where they do not want to talk about the drug and drug abuse because they think that the drug balance or the drug uh, dealers are kind of demigods. So nobody wants to point out them and nobody wants to talk about them because they fear something might happen to you if you point out this student. But at the end of the day, or at the end of the or, 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 of everything, is that this these kids or, or the school going children are highly, highly consuming these drugs. So I, I think uh, as a society, we need to come up strongly and to say and to talk against this because again it is highly, highly influencing students in a bad way. And if you have students who are doing drug and drug abuse, that one can highly contribute uh, in a negative way towards their education and towards their performance. Yeah, another factor that, of course, again, it affects, although this one might not affect 100%, is the teaching methodology. Uh, of course, we have quite a number of students. We have a range in terms of students. There are those that are highly, uh, that we refer to them as as, a, as a fast learners, and then we have the slow learners, and then we have the average. So as a teacher, you need to make sure that you accommodate everybody. You can accommodate the fast learners, you accommodate the average student, as well as the slow learners, so that at least you use the methods and the methodology that is going to benefit all of them. So if you have group discussion and then you group them according to their ability, that when they sit down in their group uh, discussions, they can be able to help each other depending on their abilities. So if, if for instance, again, is the delivery of the content, you need to make sure that you at least break it down so that it can cater for the fast learners, it can also cater for the slow learners, it can also cater for, for the average student. So those are some of the things which are external uh, that can affect, you know, teaching methodology, it's external, and it, but it can also affect highly in terms of the students uh, performance if we do, we have a teacher who does not uh, who does not cater for the three groups of people you know the, the the fast learners the average student and the slow learners chances are that some some are going to be left out and hence of course those ones are going to be you know uh, they're, they're going to perform poorly and, and, and all that so those are some of the factors that can highly contribute to the poor performance of the student but I also want to go ahead and outline what are some of the things that then the students are you know what are some of the things that they can do as the student to ensure that at least they are performing better what are some of the things that they can do to improve on their performance because I think performance is in terms of 844 because 844 is result oriented and everybody must agree with me that 844 if you do not perform if you do not have the grades chances are that of course everybody is going to brand you as a, as a failure it's going to brand you as a, an unperformer and author so 844 is usually um result oriented and so we want to ensure that at least at the end of the day every student perform as per the expectations of the society because they have they have they have you know the society has set the threshold in which this threshold so uh, as i was saying that 844 is mostly result oriented and of course uh the society or there are those parameters and there are those set um threshold that has to be met for you then to move from uh, stage one to stage two. So for instance, if, if you look at primary level, there is that grade that they need to, or there are those marks that they need to attain for them to be admitted. And of course, again, when it comes to high school, for you then to go to the to university and for you to be able to do certain courses, then of course they, that's that sh threshold that have been set. So as much as we are saying, that's why we are insisting on the performance is because the 844 is result oriented and of course they have set certain thresholds or they have set certain parameters and they have set certain grades that those ones are the only ones that can join university and these ones are the only ones that can be used to do or to pursue a certain course. Hence the need to insist on the performance you know 
that is what uh, th- that is th- that is my main concern because you know we have uh, a system an education system that of course as much as we want to shy off and say that all students uh, are successful regardless of, or regardless of how they are performing of course 844 is result oriented you don't have to forget about that that of course everybody else will brand you depending on how are you performing so how uh, a student performs matters a lot so uh, as much as we are talking about poor performance what are some of the things that then the students themselves can do to ensure that they can perform better that they perform better that they they have good grades that will take them from one level to the other and of course that is the next thing that i'm likely or that is the next thing that i want us to talk about you know the first thing that of course we have talked about we have talked about lack of motivation and lack of motivation usually come when the student have a negative attitude towards a certain subject a student have a negative attitude towards a certain teacher so number one thing that the student need to do uh, so that they can perform better is to develop positive attitude towards teachers and towards subjects as much as we are saying that there is a transition from primary school to high school where a student maybe in high school in primary school they were doing eight subjects no no eight they were doing five subjects and then they come to high school where they are expected to do 12 subjects some students get confused and some students feel overwhelmed and hence they they, they they develop bad attitude towards towards certain subjects and they develop a bad attitude towards certain t- 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 teachers they despise them or maybe they 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 scorn the 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 subject and all that and that one is going to affect their performance because there is no way that you will have uh, a, a distasteful uh, attitude towards a certain subject and then you are expected to perform there is no, no way, way that, that you will sit, sit down and read on that topic or there is no way that you will go and sit down and read on that subject so when the students have a uh, negative attitude you know they hate a certain teacher they hate a certain subject then of course that one is going to highly affect their performance so uh, one things in which uh, one th- way in which the student can improve on their performance is by positive by developing a positive attitude towards the subject and towards the teachers we know we uh, when we were in high we were in, we were in school we had our favorite teachers maybe depending on how they were dressing depending on how they were doing their different things uh, and all that. So there are some teachers who are dear to the student and the others who are not dear to the student. Maybe because they are strict to these students, maybe they are uh, they do not condone laziness, they do not condone uh you know work that is not thorough. So some students tend to, you know, have a negative attitude towards teachers. And so when that teacher is in class teaching, they will not even, they will yes be there in terms of physically being in class, but mentally they're not there. So if you have a negative attitude towards the teacher, you will put a barrier in which that subject will not be able to understand and will not be able to work towards making sure that you achieve the best in that subject. So develop positive attitude towards the subject and also towards the teacher. And of course, that one is going to prepare you and to help you get the best performance and best best results ever number one number two or number yes another factor that the student or another way in which student can improve on their performance is time management effective time management now because students tend to waste time in things that do not add value to them if you tell a student to study for one hour and you tell the same student to go to the field studying for one hour will make this student sleep will make this student not concentrate for that whole hour but you tell the student go to the field get the balls and go do be in the field for one hour that is where they will be more productive i'm not uh, i'm not um, i'm not ignorant of the talent and nurturing of the talent but as much as we are saying the talents are there there is that time stipulated for talents uh, and there is that time stipulated for games and all that but again i'm saying that you need to make sure that the time that you are required to study from prep time to lesson le- lesson time to uh, evening preps and all that you need to make sure that you effectively manage your time have a timetable draw a timetable that you say that this time this is what i'm going to study this other time this is what else i'm going to study so that if you have effective time management of course you are going to cover a lot and you have uh, you will have a lot of time to cover the subject that you have stipulated for that time and then that one will uh, make you of course concentrate on that subject and concentrate on the certain topic and of course you are going to perform uh, well at the end of the day because we have seen students where they can only study at the watch of a teacher 
we 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 do not have the self-driven kind of students that were there some 10 years back we no longer have them because these students need to constantly be reminded to do the right thing they need to be constantly reminded to be in class constantly reminded to work hard constantly reminded to uh not make noise and author and that is why you find it uh a bit uh, different nowadays that you have to have a teacher during morning prep you have to have a teacher uh, to remind you to get to class during break times uh, you need to have a teacher during evening prep and that one uh, if they do not watch on you or they do not watch on a certain student who may be an average student mostly and the and the slow learners chances are that these guys are not going to concentrate in class and hence of course that one is going to contribute to their poor performance and we have seen another caribou of student who only study towards the exam time you know, learning is a is a process. You have to make sure that you constantly you are constantly reminding yourself about what you've been taught in class. If you don't constantly read, if you don't constantly remind yourself of what the what the, that topic entails, chances are that you're going to to forget so many concepts and so many important concepts, and of course, you're not going to perform well. So. Uh, I think it is very, very important that as a student, know how to effectively manage your time so that at the end of the day, you will have covered a lot so that you do not waste time and then complain later that I didn't have time to to do my personal studies and all that. Number three way in which you can improve on your, on your performance is um, adopting good study habits. Good study habits are those things that are going to help you improve on the subject area and they're going to help you improve on a certain topic. Now, there is no way that you will study without note taking. There is no way that you will study without the questions that guide you on that topic. So those are some of the good study habits. You have to ensure that you at least you are taking notes on the subject that you're studying as well as you're having questions that are going to guide you in terms of, you know, you know this question, this is how the questions are phrased, and then this is these are the expected answers. And by so doing, you'll be able to familiarize yourself with this kind of question and how questions are set. And then you're also going to familiarize yourself with, you know, the expected answers that should be that should be written uh, regarding a certain question. So if you do not do that, if you do not... Uh, study by taking notes so that at least the retention of whatever you are studying can be high and then you do not have guided questions questions that can guide you questions that can help you um, revise well and, and and get to be conversant with the topic that you are reading about then of course at the end, end of the day you will have read it you will have studied but you not have done the right thing because you do not know if a certain question uh a question is is phrased in this way, how are you supposed to react, how are you supposed to respond to that question. So it is very, very important that you that you adopt good study habits and these good study habits will help you to improve in your subject area. Another one is, of course, setting realistic goals. Students do not even understand themselves. For you to set goals, you have to understand yourself. Which kind of a student are you? Are you a fast learner? Are you an average student? Are you a slow learner? Do you require more time to read? Do you require more time with the teacher? Do you require? Are you the kind of student who just understand what the teacher has, has, has taught while the teacher is in class? Or are you a kind of a student who needs to constantly have the teacher in class as well as read on yourself, as well as constantly? Consult different books as well as consult the different uh, people that you are around with. So you must ensure that you realize who you are so that now when it comes to setting of goals, you can set realistic goals that you can be able to achieve. There is no way that you'll move from grade D, for instance, to grade A overnight. So you have to make sure that at least you are setting realistic goals that you are working towards achieving. Because if you do not set realistic goals, you are going to constantly be discouraged. So say for instance, you have set that you must achieve a certain grade, like if you, are, you must achieve B and above in a certain subject. But then again, you are in your Ds. So it is not practically possible for you to move unless a miracle happen, uh, for you to miraculously move from D to be overnight. You have to make sure that at least you have set realistic goals that at the end of this exam or at the end of this term, I want to be at C plus so that now next time you work hard from C plus to a B so that now it encourages you. But the moment you set unrealistic goals are goals that cannot, that you cannot be even be able to achieve yourself. So it means that you are constantly going to be discouraged. 
anytime that you do an exam and you don't achieve them, you're going to feel discouraged. You're going to feel demoralized. You're going to feel uh, overwhelmed. You're going to feel bad about yourself. And hence, that one will even make you perform poor. Poor. Yes, you are going to perform poorer than before. Because you will feel like I'm working very hard, but I'm not achieving whatever I've set. So you have to ensure that the goals that you have set, what you want to achieve, it is realistic so that at least you're working towards that in a very good manner. So that if you do exam A and then you get a B, then, then you set to get to a B plus. Then you set to get to an A minus and authored, but there's no way that you can just set a goal overnight and you achieve it. So you work towards your realistic goals. And the first thing that you need to do is ensure that you have set realistic goals. That is the next part. Oh, that is the next point. Another point, of course, that students do not take uh, kindly is the consulting your teachers and your peers. Uh, consulting your peers, some people or some students feel, feel uh they shy off from consulting their peers. One, because they feel that their peers are going to judge them as, as the kind of people who do not understand whatever is being taught. And then they feel like if I consult a certain teacher, they are going to brand me as people who do not understand, you know. But you should not shy away from consulting because at the end of the day, if you do not understand a certain concept, then you do not ask then automatically you're not going to understand it. But the best thing that you can do, have your trusted peers, people who you you know they study, they have understood the concept, consult them, let them show you. Because again, peer-to-peer -peer kind of teaching, it works 100%. Why? Because you are able to, your peer is able to guide you the best way because they have understood the concept and in the process you will also understand that concept. Uh, again, by the time now you're going to consult the teacher, at least you'll move from a point of the known to unknown. But if you do not completely know anything to, in a certain topic, chances are that you're not going to consult. And then you do not even consult your peers, you do not even consult the teacher, then chances are, good, are, are that you're going to also to perform decimally. So uh, one thing that I would advise all of you to make sure that you do is to seek uh, help from your peers and from your teachers so that at least you can be able to uh, you can be able to improve on your performance and that one is going to work so very well. And one way in which it works 100%, ensure that you have a gist of the concept, then consult your peer about the same concept before you go to consult your teacher so that at least now you're moving from a point that this is how much you understood, this is how your peer has helped you to understand it, and then this is how now the teacher finalizes it, finalizes everything and for you to be able to understand it. That is very, very important. Another factor, another way in which you can uh, improve on your performance is by the use of technology. You know, we are living in an era where everybody, if you need anything, you just click to the internet and you get it. So if you want lessons pertaining a certain topic, you can click on the internet and that one is taught to you. Where you just sit at the comfort of your, of your chair and then you listen or maybe you do the different tasks that they're giving you. So technology, as much as students, most of the students do not use technology to enrich themselves. They do not use technolo technology to uh, educate themselves. They use technology the wrong way. Maybe they are watching certain movies. Maybe they are watching certain influencers who are maybe not even students. So I would advise and I would urge the student to use technology positively, to use technology to uh, improve themselves. So ensure that at least you're using technology to study and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and of course you are going to make sure that at least uh, you, 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 you understand different concepts. Why? Because, you know, students or a certain age, the age of teenager, they love their phones. So if you, you, you have your phone with you and you can access internet, why don't you just sit back and then research on certain concepts that you did not score, that you did not understand, and just to listen to them or maybe just do the different tasks that they are giving you because students are highly, highly using their phones or they are highly using technology. But in this case, make sure that you use technology the right way and also make sure that you're using technology to your advantage so that at, at the end of the day, you will be able to ensure that you practice and, and, and you're able to understand. And that one will help you improve in your, in your studies because you will sit back at the comfort of your room or at the comfort of your bed and then you're studying. Yeah, instead of just using internet to just research on irrelevant things and things that are not adding to you as a student. And remember again, being a student is for a season. It's maybe a span of four years. After that, maybe you have the freedom to do whatever you want. So this span of four years, ensure that you do everything it takes. 
everything it takes to ensure that you perform and everything it takes to make sure that you get the best grade out of that season. Uh, another part or another factor that can really help you as a student to improve on your performance is participating in class. Some students shy off from participating in class depending on their attitude towards the teacher or depending on their attitude towards the subject and how wide and how far have they read the book on their self, on themselves such that... Um, if, for instance, you have a certain concept that you have studied and this concept, uh, you have well understood it. The way the teacher is going to explain in class, if you have a doubt somewhere, it's always good that you ask so that at least uh, you are able to clarify thoughts and you are able to clarify ideas and you are able to clarify uh the, the reasoning so that you do not just say that I know that concept or I understand that concept and at the end of the day, maybe you do not even understand it fully. So it is always good that you participate in class, ask questions, uh, if there are tasks to be performed, uh, ensure that you perform them uh, so that at least that one also improve, uh, help you to be active. And of course, it's also going to help you in terms of improving because the moment you ask a question and you are given the answer either by the teacher or by your peers, people who are in this, who you are studying with, then it will stick in your mind. You will remember, oh, I was given this concept and this is what I asked this question and this is the answer that was given. Then that one is going to stick in your mind. But if you do not ask questions pertaining certain topics, pertaining certain concepts, it means that at the end of the day, you're not going to have helped yourself. So participate, actively participate in class so that at least you can be able to, you know, learn and that is how learning takes place. Uh Another factor that is very, very important, and I know this is where, of course, students will practice all, will not practice all the other factors, but will practice this to 100%, is where you are supposed to get rest and exercise. You know, uh, work without play makes Jack a dull boy. Yeah, that is important. That you sometimes you go exercise, sometimes it is good that you take a rest, but you don't just take a rest having not worked. Yeah, you don't just take a rest having not worked. So you must you must ensure that you have worked very hard, maybe uh, throughout the week. Uh, and then on Saturday, Sunday, you take a rest or then you even take, you know, you, you do some exercise. You can do cycling, you can listen to music, you can go swimming. And these exercises are going to improve your your your, your prepare, preparedness for tomorrow. Your mind is going to be so relaxed. You're going to feel fresh. And so tomorrow's concept, you're going to even understand it and get it so, 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 so well. So it is important that you do exercise it is important that you 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 rest enough uh but you do not rest if you have not worked so you have to ensure that at least you have set some two hours to rest maybe over the weekend or maybe on saturday but then of course this is after you have worked the whole week you have studied the whole week you have read the, the throughout the week you have done so many exercises throughout the week so that now at the end of that week that is on saturday you take a rest or then you go out there and exercise you can do ball games you can do cycling you can do swimming and so many other exercises that will help you to you know, relax your mind, and of course, this is going to to improve your 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 your, your thinking and your mind uh, and for, for readiness for for tomorrow's work. The next thing that you need to make sure that you do is stay organized. Organize your books according to the subjects. Have the notes. Have the book that you are supposed to write notes on. And another separate book that you're supposed to do revision on. So that at least you will now be separating that this is the book for revision and this is the book for notes. So you will be reading the notebook as you write down shallow note on your revision book. So stay organized. Make sure that you have the necessary tools for you to learn. If for instance you are going to do a chemistry lesson or a chemistry revision uh, session. Ensure that you have the necessary things that you need. Ensure that you have a calculator. Ensure that you have uh, the revision books. Ensure that you have revision papers. And that is going to help you in terms of you know making sure that you improve on your studies. Ensure that you also file your documents. Ensure that you file your exams because you need them to, to revise. If you have extra notes, file them. Put them in a folder so that at least when you want to trace them then it becomes so easy. Now there are those places or there are those study rooms which have cabins. 
organize your work in some ch- such that this is CRE, this is English, this is Kiswahili. So that at least the mixed up is, is not there. And that one also saves you, saves you a lot of time and a lot of agony in terms of looking for this material here, looking for this other material here. And of course, when you, once you stay organized, even your mind is going to be more organized. So stay organized, ensure that your things are well organized. Where, where, where you are seated in the class, if it's a locker, ensure that it is well arranged. Where you are keeping your extra books, if it is in a cabin or anywhere, ensure that again they are well organized. So that at least when you are retrieving anything, when you are retrieving a paper, when you are retrieving an exercise book, when you are retrieving an, a, a textbook, you can be able to retrieve it faster and you can be able then, of course, to study. That one will help you uh, improve on your you know, on your on on your, oh, it will also help you to save on time. So it is very very important that you stay, um, you you stay organized. And the last one is, uh, uh, of course, develop a system, a support system, a strong support system. Now, this is where you make sure that you identify people who are adding value to you as a student, people who can reprimand you with love, people who can correct you with love, people who can sit down and tell you that here, you're not doing the right thing and you need to, to improve in one, two, three, four, five areas. The moment you just do not have friends who can correct you with love, people who can honestly tell you that you're now going astray, you need to make sure that those are not your friends. So you need to make sure that you have a strong support system. Maybe it could be your peers, it could be your teachers, it could be your parents. So that at least this strong support system are the people who are going to hold, hold you accountable in terms of your performance and they are going to hold you accountable in terms of you doing the right thing. They're going to help to ensure that you, you're not wasting time in class and you're not wasting time uh, during preps and you're doing the right thing. You're doing what it takes to be in that class. If it means that you are going to be in class to do studies, you are there doing that. If it means that you're going to class to... Uh, to do revision, you are in class doing that. So have a strong support system and people who can correct you with love, people who can genuinely tell you that here you are now going wrong, so that at least these people will help you to stay accountable and to ensure that at least you do the right thing. And at the end of the day, they are going to help you improve in your performance. So it's very, very important that you get a very strong support system. And this support system can be found anywhere. It can be found within your peers. It can be found um, with your parents. It can be with your teachers, people who are genuinely, genuinely going to tell you where do you want to go, which route do you want to take. And at the end of the day, those people are going to help you, you know, uh, perform better. So, yeah, that is all that I had for today. Uh, I've tackled uh, what are some of the poor, uh, the causes of poor performance among the students and how they can improve on that. Because it's very, very important that we help our students to get the right information and get the right information from the right people so that at least at the end of the day, these guys are able to work very hard and to improve and to work uh, very hard. Because as I said, and I will repeat this, uh, this one again, and I always tell, uh, to, uh, tell it to my students, is that 844 is result-oriented. As much as you want to run away from that reality, 844 is result-oriented. You must ensure that you have put the right grades on the table before we start negotiating or when we start negotiating for anything. So ensure that you are putting your foot forward and ensure that you are doing the right thing to ensure that at least you, best, you get the best grades for yourself so until next time bye for today do not uh, fail to subscribe to my youtube channel my name is wanjiro kabuchi i'm so pleased to be here bye